Okay, hi there, and in this video we'll take a look at how we calculate short-term marginal and average cost using a worked example. If you want to have a go at calculating the cost in this table, just press the pause button, maybe take a screenshot of the example and do your calculations of total, marginal and average cost, just to test your understanding. Let's look at a bakery, a small bakery operating perhaps in a local town that has in the short term fixed and variable costs. So even if output was zero, for example, if they didn't produce any bread or baguettes and things, they would still have fixed costs of £500 per week. And as output goes up in blocks here of 50, uh, their fixed costs stay more or less the same, but the variable costs change with output. If we add the fixed costs and the variable costs together, we get total costs, and that's shown in the next column. So total cost, for example, of producing 50 baguettes per week rises from zero uh, to or 500, sorry, if they don't produce any fixed costs, to 700 if they produce the first batch of 50 and so on. And the costs rise, not necessarily in proportion to output, but there's a change in total cost as output increases. The marginal cost is the change in total costs from producing or supplying one extra unit. Now, because output's going up in units of 50, we have to divide the change in total costs by 50 to get a one unit change. So for example, the output, the marginal cost of the, from going from 50 to 100, the total variable cost rise by 120. We have to divide by 50 to get the marginal cost. If we do that, do the calculations, here's a check for your answers. That's what happens to marginal cost. Marginal cost, for example, of the first 50 units is £4 each. That drops to £2.40, £1.60. And then marginal cost is assumed to rise. This is mainly because of the law of diminishing returns that we may be moving beyond the optimal mix of fixed and variable factors. Uh, perhaps the bakery is running up against capacity constraints and having to pay more overtime and uh, machines are wearing out more quickly or being uh, having to be maintained more frequently. So we're assuming here the marginal cost eventually starts to rise. And by the time we get to the 400th, you know, if I'll put that next batch, the marginal cost is pretty high indeed. The average cost is fixed plus variable costs divided by output cost per unit. And here's the calculation check for you on average cost per unit. Very high at the start, £14 per unit, but falling pretty steeply initially, but then levelling off. And I think the optimum cost here is £5.20 if we make 250 baguettes per week. Thereafter, the average cost starts to go up again. Well, we can plot this data on graph paper. I haven't got an accurate data chart for you here, but let's think about the way that marginal average cost might change. But if we go back to our table, marginal cost falls, then rises quite steeply at the end. So we would normally draw the marginal cost curve in the short term as falling initially, reaching a low point, and then starting to pick up. And the rise in marginal cost is mainly due to the assumption of diminishing marginal productivity as we add more variable factors to a fixed factor. The crucial point from this video is that the average cost is driven by the marginal and the average cost must reach its minimum point at the lowest point of the average cost curve where the marginal cost curve intersects it from below. So whenever marginal cost is less than average cost, average cost must fall and likewise if the marginal cost or the next unit is greater than the average then the average must rise think of it like a, a cricketer's innings where the, the next innings is a marginal score affecting the average or perhaps think of it as a, as a, as a height of people in a room if the marginal the next person who comes in is very small drives, drives the average down if the next person who comes into the room is very tall six foot five or seven foot giant it drags up the average Go back to our table, we see this, for example, at output level 150. If we go up from 100 to 150, the marginal cost is £1.60 per baguette. And that's lower than the previous average, £8.20. That drags the average down to £6. And that's true in the next batch as well. Marginal cost is £3, uh, and that drags the average down to £5.25. If we go a bit further down the table, here's another example. That little batch of production, that extra 50 units, the marginal cost of each of those is £8, assumed to be. And of course, that's higher than the previous average of £5.20. So that's what's driving the average cost up from £5.20 to £5.67. 
by the time the Mars Law cost gets to £18 for that final batch, that's having quite a pretty substantial effect on the average cost, lifting it from just under £7 to over £8. Part of the explanation is what happens to two other measures of cost, the fixed cost per unit and the variable cost per unit. So here's our, I've just put a bit more detail on the table. Because total fixed costs are the same, regardless of output, uh, the more you produce, the lower is the fixed cost per unit. I've done the calculations there for you. But can you see here that that fall is, is shallow, it's beginning to shallow, it's beginning less prominent, less pronounced as output goes up. So it goes from 10 to 5 to 3 to 2 pound 50. But then the, the fall is leveling off because the fixed costs are being spread across a big range of output. So that effect tends to wear off. The variable cost, the average variable cost in blue here, is the, is the variable cost per unit falling initially from £4 to £3.20. But once diminishing returns kick in, once they start to happen, the variable cost per unit starts to go up. And it's up to £5.42, then £7. And that's offsetting the increase in the um, fixed cost per unit, driving, driving the average cost up. There we go. Hopefully a, a, a useful explanation of the relationship between marginal and average cost for businesses, hypothetically, theoretically, in the short run.